Desert-wise, I think, is something that one acquires over time, and that is the realization that your success is going to be tied to how much you adapt to the desert versus how much you need to adapt the desert to your vision of what you want to see in landscaping. If you follow the lead the desert offers, you'll be much more successful. When we first moved in in 2004, the house was basically surrounded by rose gardens, which are roses are beautiful, but they're also high water use. So gradually over time, we replaced the roses with native and drought tolerant vegetation and sought to reduce our water use that way. Another thing that made a huge difference in this property is the gravel. We spent a little extra and got what's called desert gold, is the color of the gravel. It's been here over 15 years with hardly any loss. We put it in about two or three inches thick. It was really worth the expense to get the color that blended seamlessly with the environment. So the desert gold solved a number of problems. First of all, it, uh, it solved the dust problem. With the elimination of the dust, it allowed us to make regular use of our clothesline, for example. We have a dryer, we never use it. Even in the winter, uh, clothes dry very quickly out here. With the elimination of the dust, we can dry our clothes outside and have them still feel like they're clean and fresh. So that made a huge difference. The gravel also allowed us to um, control sort of the way that the, the water flowed around the property. We don't get that much rain, but when we do, it's often comes uh, quickly and in a deluge sort of situation. And, and so it's important that we uh, steer it where it's needed and uh, make the most use of how it's coming down and, and where it's going. Something that's natural to the desert southwest, it's been very easy to cultivate and grow, has been the agave. It's just a wonderful desert plant that we've had a lot of success with and uh, we see thrives out here. The Palo Verde is another plant that you see often at local nurseries. They're drought tolerant, they flower almost all year long and take very little water and is a, is a wonderful focus plant. We we're fortunate enough to have acquired the property with many trees already at a mature stage. One of them, um, or two of them really, are the pistachio. There's a male and a female. Um, behind me is the male. And oddly enough, uh, I think it was grafted from another uh, tree and over years, the original graft has re-emerged. This is more of a typical pistachio leaf. Uh, this is from the male tree. And then the, the smaller leaves that you see are from the original graft. We don't know what it is, uh, but each year it seems to take over more and more. I'm very fortunate to have this grove of jojoba, which was planted by a previous owner around 1971. They're really magnificent and they provide a great habitat for quail and all kind of wildlife. Extremely drought tolerant. It's been a real positive to the landscape. The pines are, are leftovers from a previous owner. Um, we're so fortunate that they're here. I'm sure one of the reasons they've been so successful and, and continue to thrive is that they're in the septic system. They're Aleppo pine, which are from Syria. It's a type of pine that you see often here at local nurseries. There are four or five of them on the property in the range of 30 to 40 years old. And they, they make a wonderful sound when the wind blows blows through them in the afternoons. You know, desert-wise living really isn't any one thing, but more like a frame of mind that shapes how you interact with the desert environment. And desert-wise living can be about coexisting with desert wildlife and not ever introducing poisons into the food chain. Desert-wise is also about recognizing the value of our dark night skies and preserving them by limiting use of outdoor lighting and shielding it when it must be used. Desert Wise Living is often about listening, staying quiet, and listening to what the desert is telling you. <laughs>